Welcome into the DNVR Rockies podcast brought to you by Strava Craft Coffee. Remember to use the promo code DNVR25 because when you do that, well, you get 25% off your entire purchase of that CBD infused, deliciously rich, and potentially life altering. Strava Craft Coffee. I'm your host, Drew Creaseman. I'm the managing editor of DNVR Rockies. With me, as always, is beat writer Patrick Lyons. And on this episode, we're taking a detour into Colorado Rockies prospect land. That's right, with the game getting rained out against the Pirates today, uh, going to make it up for another doubleheader that's going to start around 10 o'clock a.m. Mountain Time. So that's going to be fun and weird and interesting for the second time this week. Um, we figured this is a good opportunity to take a step back, look at what uh, some of the Colorado Rockies youngsters have been doing down there on the farm. Something we were not able to do for all of 2020 because there was no minor league season, which was really a bummer. It's always fun to catch up on what the top prospects in the system are doing, who's meeting expectations, who's maybe not quite there yet. A lot of interesting names in the Rockies system, despite the fact that it's not ranked incredibly highly. We've talked about this before. There's still plenty of individuals to talk about and, and think about and get excited about for the Rockies, Patrick. But there's a lot of differences for the minor leagues this year, too, because I was I had to re- remind myself as we were going through and look at, oh, yeah, there's nobody in Pioneer League. Zach Bean's not down in Grand Junction at the Pioneer League like would have been the case for the last several years, right? The uh, restructuring of minor league baseball is something we also, before we get into the big names, we want to update everybody on where they're at let's remind the people where they're at (laughs) what literally (laughs) where at even is yeah minor league baseball trimmed 43 different teams uh out from uh, under its umbrella and so they basically said we're only going to keep 120 and we're going to spread them out between the four levels low a high a double a triple a well we still got the hartford yard goats and the albuquerque isotopes two mainstays with beautiful ballparks well-run organizations uh, and as as you said, Drew Grand Junction Rockies no longer under that umbrella, but they still have professional baseball. Uh, I think they won last night, eighteen to six over the Boise Hawks. So two former Rockies affiliates actually played each other in a pro game, but without Rockies prospects. It's twenty twenty one. What, what do you expect? Yeah, yeah. And so um, Lancaster Jet Hawks, they were unfortunately one of those teams that got washed away, and uh, I think they're still looking to. Uh, figure something out and be a, a collegiate team. Asheville tourists are now with Houston. So that means there's two new affiliates for the Rockies uh, in some cool locales that you definitely want to check out. Fresno, uh, they were a AAA affiliate two years ago and were AAA for a very long time. The Fresno Grizzlies are now the low A affiliate for the Rockies. That's where a lot of the young boys we're going to talk about today and those high schoolers from the 2020 draft where they're going to be at. And then high A is in Spokane, Washington, a part as uh, part of that, that former uh, Northwest league. And so those are your four affiliates, two mainstays, two new ones, and uh, a lot of excitement so far for the first minor league season since 2019, where it's, it's, we're getting close to like 700 days uh, since we had had minor league baseball and it's back and it's, it's exciting. It, Definitely right now, we need to look to the future more and more. And and, and always, and always, we need to look to the future for our hope. Uh, But right now, it's important for the Rockies. And there's there's a lot of good news so far for the Rockies prospects. One of the reasons why it's important to remember the context of the minor leagues is actually evident in the first guy we want to talk about. The obvious number one overall prospect in the Rocky system, their only consensus top 100 guy, according to, you know, the Baseball Americas and the MLB pipelines and all those great resources that you should definitely be checking out is, of course, Zach Veen, who almost miraculously fell to them uh, in the draft this last year. And, uh, you know, we knew as a high school pick that there's going to be a long term project there. But you go and look at some of his numbers and, you know, he's hitting 246 on base 379 only slugging 333 he hasn't hit a home run yet and you gotta go oh man i thought this guy was the next cody bellinger i thought he was the the you know the real deal the next big thing and then you look at you know he's played 20 games and they're out in that league and i I like that fan graphs keeps the wrc plus for these guys because that's one of the things you've got to keep in context how does the league play how are hitters going right now and Zach Veen's actually at a 108 
WRC plus. So he's actually been slightly above the league average in terms of his offense out there. And as a youngster who doesn't have that that level of Grand Junction, those 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 lower levels anymore, kind of jumping right into everybody's just an A ball now. Uh, it's competition's a little stiffer than you would have seen for the Ryan Maltapias and the Ryan McMahons when they were 19 years old and getting their first taste. Uh, David Dahl also at that age. So Zach Veen's numbers may not look super impressive, and, and we still want to see him improve. We want to see him hit bombs and do the whole thing. But you look at it and go, is he struggling? Uh, and he's just – he's hanging in right now. He's not doing anything super special, but he's been okay. Yeah, he's a, he's a kid playing against adults. You know, this is his first time right. as a professional. It's, you know, Cody Bellinger's the guy he's getting compared to a lot. And and if you've seen the swing, you there's there's definite comps there. What's, what's interesting is if you go back and look at Bellinger's first two years as a pro, now granted, he was drafted at 17 and, and he played at the rookie league um, for two years. Over those two years, uh, he played 98 games and hit four home runs. Power came next year, uh, second year as a pro, where he, when he hit thirty. So, you know, you you see those those things, and you go, okay, well, again, it's it's really early to trash the pick, which I don't think anybody is just yet. And you say, look, he's he's figuring it out. You know, he was he was batting third in the lineup on on opening day he's since drop, but like even that, you know, keeps a little pressure and, and at least lets you know that the coaching staff, you know, has has a lot of faith in him. The one part of his game that he has. Uh, seemingly added that's been interesting that we we certainly weren't counting on is uh, stolen bases he's got 13 bags already now he has gotten thrown out six times but you like that kind of aggression on the base paths uh and so you know for being you know the leader in the organization you, you wouldn't have guessed anyone would be faster than a guy like eddie diaz uh if you follow the rockies minor leaguers you know he's, right. he's the quickest guy that they got in the system and he only has 10 zach veen 13 so uh, still plenty of time for that power to come. I mean, that's one of the things you hear about a lot, even with some major leaguers. Um, that That's something with Josh Fuentes that it's still, you know, being talked about. Granted, you know, Josh is a, a lot older, but you you look at him and how his game has evolved and you say hit doubles and then eventually the homers will will come. And we're seeing that power, you know, we're finally seeing that power with Ryan Maltapia. And you go, ah, oh, he's been around for forever. It right. just takes that kind of time. Hit doubles, eventually they turn into Homer. So he has got six doubles and they, he's got plenty of time to start hitting those long balls. There's going to be a weird sentence, but watching his footage, uh, some of the video that's available, I thought to myself, wow, it's been a long time since I saw what a 19 year old baseball player looks like, because <laughs> I've, I had even forgotten like how much Ryan McMahon has filled out over the years, right? Like these guys, like <laughs> they're, they're still, like you said, he's, he's still a kid playing against adults out there and he's really tall and lanky. So he's, yeah, he's going to fill out. We're going to continue to watch his growing career with, with a lot of anticipation and excitement and look in, we're still waiting for that first pro home run, but I'm sure it's coming before too long. So and the guy that uh, one of his teammates, I think, that's been doing a little bit better and unexpectedly is is Drew Romo. Now, he's only hitting a little over 200 right now, but uh, the bat's been there. He's been driving in runs. He's got a, a triple. He's got a homer. I think he was batting cleanup for a little while in, in that Fresno lineup. That's uh, another high school guy, Drew Romo, at 19 years old, the guy that the Rockies selected more as a glove first guy, a switch hitter. Um uh, here I'll name drop uh, Jack Etkin, who's a guy who does write for Baseball America and, and talks about the prospects a lot. Uh, we were discussing, you know, Romo and and a, a guy like Willie McIver, some of the catching options that the Rockies have down at the lower levels. And uh, it looks like you know he's got a, a little bit more pop and a little more consistency in his bat on the left-handed side. Which, if you're a switch hitter, that has to that's, give up a side. <laughs> I was that's, say, the that's, side. The, that's the side you want is your strong side. That's yeah. the side. Yeah. yeah. So he's he's looked. He's looked pretty solid so far, again, for a guy who's, for the first time, is playing against other pros. And, you know, there are guys with, with the minor leagues having shrunk down by about 20%. That means there's some guys playing uh, against Fresno, who they're 14-7 and seven right now, in second place in their division, looking uh, really nice so far coming out the gate. But there are those guys that are still hanging on that are 21, 22 years old that, yeah, granted, these guys aren't uh, – top 100 prospects or future superstars themselves, but that's a, that's a veteran guy. That's a, as you said, a 
players who have filled into their body a little bit more. They're not 19 years old. These guys have, have gone to college, some of them, or they, they've been a pro for four or five years. They're almost seasoned vets at that time. And that's who Romo and Veen have been going up against here. So they're holding their own so far. And again, even if, if this season we get, we get to the end of the, uh, the play and, and we go, oh, the numbers aren't that great, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean much of anything, to be honest. Yeah, uh, it's you, the the numbers really start to matter more and more. The deeper you get into your pro career, the higher levels you get into. Once you start, you know those, those kind of expectations come in, and so that's why we can move now to somebody where we don't have to make all those caveats about the numbers this way or that way, or he's getting new to the thing. Uh, somebody who I've admitted in the past I never thought was going to turn into a top prospect for the Rockies, somebody who I thought was just limited in, in a few too many of the most important ways. And, and I I'm, think I'm happy to report that I was probably wrong about Ryan Rollison, uh, who's currently got one of the best batting averages of anybody in the Rockies system, hitting 303 in AAA, his first year of AAA, if you're into batting average. But that shows you the consistency. The reason I bring that up is because he's the guy that Jonathan Mayo gives the highest score for power of anybody in the Rockies system, slapping him with a 60. So Ryan Valade bringing this power tool that is yet to really show up totally at AAA, but the fact that he's still able to do it with uh, some consistency uh, with the bat, you got to appreciate that. Um, that, that that's going to be an intriguing one to see. I, I think he's not going to have the kind of defensive utility that, you know, early in his career, they're even looking at, maybe this guy could be still be a shortstop or, okay, maybe he'll be a really good third baseman. And so it's like, can he be a serviceable left fielder? And I'm not sure, but if he hits like this, who cares? Like, <laughs> like at some point you stop caring. He, he's been raking ever since I, I think uh, an appearance in the Arizona fall league. Again, we went like a year and a half without my, so it's, it's a while ago, but um, his bat has been playing. It's been playing in spring training. Now he's taking it to triple a, uh, Got to, got to be excited about the potential impact bat of Ryan Valade. I'm, I'm a lot more excited than I thought I was going to be uh, going into this season. You know, when we, we did our, our prospect rankings, um, I wasn't really too high on him after the 2019 season. And I, I know he's been young for his play. I think he's still only about the eighth youngest player in triple a right now or at least in that that pacific coast league yeah, um so yeah still really young for that level and i and i like that the rockies have been a little more aggressive on some guys and we'll get to some some of those other players that they've kind of been advancing along and, and maybe a little bit at a higher level than you would have imagined at this point but in going through and, and looking at the rest of the guys in the system ultimately we came to the the idea that, you know what, he's the fourth best player. And again, go back and, and check out our, our articles all at the end of uh, the month of March and spring training, where we previewed the top 33 and a little homage to Larry Walker, uh, top 33 purple prospects that we had. And yeah, Valade was really high. I was, I was almost shocked at, uh, at how high we were going to have him, but that's where he fits. And, uh, and he's holding his own, you know, uh, OPS has been, you know, relatively high again for the system has the advantage of playing in that, that Pacific Coast League. But uh, good bat to ball uh, in the early going, you know, 10 strikeouts and, and 66 at-bats. Again, pretty good for a young guy who, yeah. you know, the last time, you know, he played, it was uh, it, it was in high A Lancaster uh, a couple years ago. So a lot more, you know, we talk about, you know, I don't know what's harder. I, I think it's still harder going from the high school ranks uh, to even even low A like like Vino yeah. and Romo against some of these more seasoned guys, but it it's still a big jump for what Valade has previously seen. Now going to Triple A at 22 years old, as you said, right. and facing these guys that are some of them are just are major leaguers that don't have room yet on the big league roster, or right. they're guys still figuring it out. And you see those glimpses, you see those moments of like, hey, damn, this guy can still really pitch pretty well. I mean, even look at the isotopes bullpen and yeah, you know, maybe some of those guys won't actually be able to help the Rockies out. They'll, they'll probably get an opportunity to, uh, but with Chris Rustin and Jesus Tinoco and, and a handful of other guys that you go, Hey, in, in short spurts, these guys can dominate. And that's who Ryan Valade is going against each and every night in that Pacific coast league. Yeah. Uh, one final note on Valade. I, I found really funny is he's the Rockies prospect card in MLB the show. 
And I, I was like, huh, what interesting that they went with the late, you know, and in years past, it's been guys, you know, Brandon Rogers or, or David Dahl before that, or John Gray. Futures. There was a Jeff Hoffman one, but again, those all, you know, made sense as a potential futures star or whatever. So to see Ryan Valade was the pick for this year. I was like, huh, cool. Way to go, man. <laughs> he's, he's one of the more volatile guys in the system, depending yeah. on who you ask, where right. some people say like, eh, maybe he's like around a top 10, maybe even, you know, 15th best prospect. And then other people go, no, he's the second best guy in the system right now. Right. So um, the future still looks pretty bright for Valade and hey, who, who knows how the season plays out. But as an outfielder, and and the Rockies are are fairly thin right now in the outfield, we could see him in September. I think one of the interesting questions moving forward, and this will kind of be a running question I'll, I'll ask, is like, because remember, Trevor Story was not ranked in the top 100 before he debuted. Charlie Blackman wasn't. Ryan right. McMahon wasn't. Kyle Freeland wasn't. Herman Marquez wasn't. Uh, David Dahl, John Gray were. Brendan Rodgers was. Uh, but those are really the only ones recently. Most of these guys that have turned in. So uh, it'll be, I think that'll be an interesting question. Will Ryan Valade follow in the footsteps of those guys and actually turn in a very, very nice major league career? Or will it go more the other way of plenty of prospects we've known over the years who were highly rated and got to the bigs and just didn't work out for them. So um, there's another one we got to talk about. We will toast our Breck brews on this day to all of them. I've got my, Black Cherry Hard Seltzy from The Good Company. You, you can trust them. It's a good company right there on the can. How do you not trust our friends at Breck Brew? Uh, for, look, it's the most delicious beer anywhere you're going to find, especially if you're getting samples. You want to get a little bit of everything. Get your 15-can sampler of Breck Brew and your 15-can sampler of Breck Seltzy at a local liquor store, at a King Supers. And if you're coming on down to the DNVR bar, you can get a bigger draft Breck Brew if you're a member of the family. Do sign up today at the DNVR.com. Subscribe for that annual. You get access to all the written content, discounts on hats, shirts, and masks, the bigger beer down at the bar, access to the Discord channel. Plus, we'll hook you up with a free shirt from the DNVR locker and a free holistic stick from our friends at holisticwellness.com. Check them out, H-O-L-I-S-T-I-K wellness.com and use promo code dnbr 30 to get 30 percent off after that and of course what we're talking about here today these prospects excellent potentially hopeful insurance policies for your colorado rockies what you gotta know is that your insurance policy is maybe a little bit less hopeful than that you want to have it locked down exactly you don't want to be paying too much for your home or car insurance i was Took me less than 10 minutes with our friends at Gabby Insurance. It's G-A-B-I dot com slash D-N-V-R. Easy to remember, stands for Get a Better Insurance, and you can do exactly that. No calls, no emails, no text messages, none of that garbage. They just give you quotes to save money instantly. I saved 480 bucks. Our guy, Eric Weedham, saved over a grand. Just about everybody here at D-N-V-R has saved money. Again, Costs you nothing, just a little bit of time. Go to gabi.com slash DNVR for your totally free check. Find out how much money you can take away from insurance companies and put into your own pocket or bank account. Wow. How, how have you not done this already? Make it happen. All right. Do it. Do it. Yeah, uh, we another, don't. We, yeah. You know, oh, I was just going to say, you know, Tyler Nevin, former mm. Rockies prospect, Got the call up from Baltimore. Thanks for that. We we don't know what the future holds for these guys. Kevin Padlow was a guy who he finally recently, you know, made his debut. Uh, I don't remember, you know, the, the 2020 and 2021 have, have bled together <laughs> yeah. so right. much. No, I think he made his debut this season this, this uh, with, yeah. with Tampa. So he's he's finally thinking. So you, you just never know. Again, who would have thought would have maybe six years ago a a unrestricted free agent amateur signing by the name of josh later on joshua, joshua. fuentes yeah. would have been a thing you just never know and that is one of the beautiful things about prospects it, it, it can be a frustrating piece too right mm -hmm. i mean drew you could you could run down a list of all the guys you go oh this is gonna be the next so and so this dude is gonna he's gonna bring a championship to denver because of how good he is and it doesn't happen and yeah while that's frustrating you don't get your hopes up that much where it's it's devastating we rockies fans in recent memory, know what devastating means yeah, uh, right. when, when things don't happen. But when it comes to prospect, usually it's just happiness and goodness. And 
hey man, let's let's hope on it and let's see and let's have this guy prove us wrong. Yeah, right. And and I think you know that's that's kind of when it's the Brendan Rogers type situations and he's not playing well, those are, those are the toughest ones when there is right. that amount of hype. And, and he was more hyped than a lot of these other guys. But uh, I still think it's fun watching him play. And like, like you're right, yeah, over the years, especially in baseball, I always think that's funny. It's like no one prospect is coming to save your team. Talking about here, uh, apply with him being thrown right into high A even. Uh, they didn't even put him in at low. Now, now he had some college experience. So... Okay, but that's a tough task. Straight to high A ball, um, hanging in there is is that a fair way to say? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Second most amount of innings right yeah. now um, in, in the system, you know, which which is pretty good. So he's going out there and um, he's giving them close to six innings a start. So you got to like that. So yeah, yeah, ERA is a little bloated, but um, you, you like the Rockies challenging him in doing that. McMahon was one of those guys that was maybe a little aggressive, you know, in, in the past uh, with the two rookie levels that the Rockies had had at, at Grand Junction and Boise, the high school guys go to Grand Junction and the college guys typically would go to Boise, like almost like the high version of rookie right. ball. And then the next year they all go to low A. Here we are, as you said, McMahon high A in Spokane. They're challenging him a little bit and we'll, we'll see what he does this year. But so far he's giving them innings. Yeah, as a reminder, both John, even John Gray and Kyle Freeland, who were both college experienced pitchers, actually started in Grand Junction. Now the Rockies moved them quickly. Like Gray, I think, made five or six starts. Freeland, something similar. Kind of got their feet wet, gave them that opportunity to experience some success. And then I think, I think they jumped John straight to high A at that point. I do believe Kyle joined that uh, Asheville low A team that won a championship. Uh, there but so so with Mc, with chris mcmahon they basically cut out the first four weeks to six weeks of what they did with john gray and kyle freeland and jumped straight to step two he's in there at high a holding his own the one thing i really like about his profile so far 18 strikeouts in 22 innings just six walks okay got three to one three to one strikeout to walk that. like that's that's a huge piece. Yeah, maybe maybe a little too much over the plate, but you know his first two starts actually were really solid. Uh, five innings each, or basically gave up one run, uh, two runs in, on opening day, and then, and then one run in the second start. So um, he's their second best prospect right now. Maybe not the second highest ceiling because Hell Chris Oliveras, who we'll get to, um, could have have the highest ceiling. But right now, as far as prospects go. You you like that they were still able to get some pitching, you know, on on draft day and since then, I would have liked maybe two arms in the first three picks because of that deep class, but they were still able to get one. And you know what? We'll see how this plays out. And maybe you go, you know what? They knew McMahon was was going to be there for for them, especially when when they had made that second pick of, of Drew Romo. You couldn't pass a, up Zach. A Lee. lot was riding on it, though. A right? lot was like riding on it. it. It was pretty clever. And when you're that clever, you have to be right. Yeah, and and maybe they thought, you know what? If we go McMahon, we won't be able to get Romo five picks later. So they were they you know, if they were able to get their guys, and McMahon was their guy, and he ends up doing it. You go, hey, no harm, no foul. You went with the prep boys uh, with your first two picks, and so you know McMahon is is one of those guys to keep your eyes on because uh, if they continue to to really you know push him through, I mean, shoot, if you're down in Albuquerque and you want to see some AAA baseball, could Chris McMahon? be there by the end of next year if, if yeah. he continues to progress maybe yeah yeah I, I i'm very curious to see how that pans out and I, I agree i'm i'm high on the makeup i'm high on the stuff like you said he's been throwing a lot of strikes maybe almost too many but that's uh, uh there's an old baseball idiom that bud black says that i'm never gonna get right uh, <laughs> Tra tracy ringlesby always makes it about horses you, you know always said I'd, I'd rather have to pull back on the reins than kick them and say go 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 I'd rather have to pull him out of the strike zone a little bit, tell a guy to nibble, then that be his natural tendency. That Chris McMahon's natural tendency is to attack hitters and to, and to go innings, like you said. You yeah, have and, our attention, sir. Yeah, and and one of his teammates, as we we just mentioned, is is Hell Chris Oliveras, another guy who <laughs> just got I think was 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 aggressive. It was an aggressive yeah. move, and I'm all yeah. for it. I am all for it. You know, seeing him in spring training, uh, with him getting the invite, and I think you know they once he they they added him to the forty man 
uh, roster. They, they said, hey, we can't expose him because someone's going to pick him up, stash him in the bullpen as a lefty reliever. Then next year, throw him in the minors for some more seasoning, stretch him back out to a starter. And our next thing you know, after he becomes a rule five pick, he's now uh, a big left-handed starter in the big leagues at the age of 22. So yeah. they had to protect him a little bit early, but he, he did really well down in Scottsdale this year. And they said, you know what, instead of going low way, which might've been the, the natural progression for him, they decided to challenge him as well. Uh, and he, so he's been with Spokane, um, you know, not as much success as, as McMahon has similar ERA. Um, but that's okay. Kids 20 years old. He's another one of those guys <laughs> I mean, that's very young for the level. Very young for the level. Very. Yeah. And uh, he, the stuff still plays. He's got a hell of a fastball. Uh, especially from the left side. So you just go, yeah, they're, they're going to be a very, very interesting. You, you can you can be a little more patient with him at that age and the numbers and that when you see the stuff is there and he is still finding some success already at that level at that age, you go, ooh, this could be exciting in a couple of years. If you live in the Pacific Northwest and you're listening to this or you're just planning a trip to go out there this summer, you're going to notice us saying Spokane a lot this episode yeah. because – that is the team that is loaded. That's Those guys got are fun. A lot of the best prospects, and just, just frankly, where where it's bottlenecking in a good way for the system. Double AA, A, Triple A doesn't have a lot of those guys, but it's exciting. Fresno and Spokane, a lot more so. Spokane has those guys that you can dream on. You could see them all in one yeah. one spot, all in one stop. If you do decide to go up to the Pacific Northwest. Maybe the most exciting of all of them. Surprised we managed to get this far without talking Toglia. Have we decided it is Toglia, right? Toglia. Not to Toglia, yes. not Toglia. Michael Toglia. What? Okay. How are we feeling about the Mike Toglia experience? We've got it interesting. Is, yeah, right. Uh, so one of the worst batting averages in, <laughs> in the system. He's hitting 157. Again, if that's what you're into, any kind of – so, so nothing there, right? But he is on basing 311. He's being walked probably on account of he's already hit six home runs. He homered in his first four games of the season, uh, which is is quite impressive. Uh, his defense is, has still continued to be, you know, a strength for him. A guy who, you know, and talk about another guy that maybe draws some uh, Cody Bellinger uh, comparisons because, you know, there's some thought that he can even play a little outfield too. Mm -hmm. um, they, now the Rockies might might need him to play first base. We'll kind of wait to see uh, with a couple other names that we'll get to here uh, in this episode. Some of those bigger bodied guys that can play some third and can play some first. But he might be able to to, to pick it in the outfield and, and show a little bit of range. But uh, he's he's been interesting. You know, he played fairly well. The stats didn't really back it up, but he was voted as you know one of the top players um, back in 2019 when he was with Boise. So. Um, yeah, the, the stats aren't, aren't helping him out too much, but this 14 RBI has been big. The strikeouts you do worry about because he wasn't striking out, uh, quite this much, um, in, in, in Boise, it, right. the numbers are up just a little bit, but again, you can work those things out. You can work out those wrinkles, um, and, 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 and hope that he can continue to have a little bit of a power stroke more, maybe more contact, maybe more contact, Michael. <laughs> He's like, if he's listening to this, he's like, I'm going to listen to my coaches, not you. I've never seen you before. You don't have the hairdo of a guy who I should be taking hitting tips from. But nevertheless, Michael, we stand Michael, you. We, we do. Look, I, I want for And the 311 on base percentage is not something to be, you know, totally forgotten in, in the mix of all that either. It's easy to when you're not making more consistent contact, expand the zone. You mentioned 28 strikeouts. Without us watching every at-bat, it's hard to know how many of those are right. chasing pitches, looking at stuff, doing whatever. But the 16 walks uh, is encouraging as well. Suggests that to some degree he's being selective, which can be one of the most difficult tools to teach a young hitter. Most young guys want to come out and swing at everything. Prime Altape, you've talked about hit your way off the island. Top his first couple of, you think he swings a lot now? <laughs> you should have seen. I think he swung at every single pitch he saw in 2013. Uh, but, you know, the, it, it it's pretty common for the guys to come out and want to prove themselves and do all the things. So seeing that guy, Dom Nunez was one of those guys who had the rare ability, even when he was in early stages of his minor league career, to get into deep counts, see a lot of pitches, take his walk. 
if he was going to, which you know, remember, you've only got three or four at bats every day to impress your coaches and the scouts and, and, and everybody else and try to get to that next level and to say, oh, yeah, you know, I went over two with a hard ground out, but I walked a couple of times because I took some good at bats. You got to hope the right people are paying attention. Uh, but I like seeing that for a guy who knows he can go shkablamo. Do we know the uh, the splits on the homers? as a switch hitter because that that also intrigues me yeah so that's actually very strange and again haven't dug in deep enough to know if they are you know tinkering with his swing and, and possibly giving up batting from the left hand side i thought he had a lot of pop from the left hand side um but he only has 11 at bats uh against against left handers so so he oh, has okay. typically been been, so, yeah, been facing been. the righties more than anything so okay. he does have five homers batting left-handed uh, versus the one, you know, lefty. So uh, it, it's been consistent okay. with that. But, right. but plenty, plenty to go. Again, this is his first full season yeah. of baseball. And again, man, last year is just so hard on for so many of those guys who didn't have games. You know, and, and that's another piece to this too is, you know, the Rockies didn't really invite too many of these guys to the alternate site, whereas, you know, some other teams did, other teams didn't. So they didn't necessarily even get that experience. And even the ones who did, they just kept facing the same guys over and over again. Right, so it's, right. It's, it's, they're working on different skills. And a lot of them have actually even said, like, you know, that downtime actually allowed me to work on a certain aspect of, of my game versus right. just kind of going game by game by game where maybe you don't get those opportunities to. Or, again, you're, you're focused more on, on the, the at-bat or the situation, whatever it may be. Um, so you, you just never know with, with these guys. So he'll, he'll be another one. We keep our eye on Yeah, Michael Toglia, Toglia, sure. Toglia, Toglia, a couple other guys. I want to make sure we mentioned before we kind of wrap up this part of it. Um, let's see, let, let, let's do this one. Let, let's go out of the middle and go down to where he's ranked right around 12th on our list came over in the, uh, cousin trade, but Elio Harris Montero. <laughs> Uh, having a nice start, not a great start again, but how much do you keep it, it, it in mind? He's uh, 22 years old there in Hartford. So, uh, you know, again, uh, uh, lost a long time, already has the four home runs, 17 ribbies and 15 walks. All nice to see again, the high on base percentage, 225 average. So making more contact than Toglia, but still not blowing you away with that. Um, solid 800 OPS for him though. So um, somebody who you weren't entirely sure what to expect uh, was one of those big wild cards in the trade. We were just kind of going. And at the time it was tough to even dive fairly into who he was because it had to be in the shadow of, of who he was traded for. But as you kind of look out there now and you see some nice pop and you go, okay, all right, this could be a thing. This is, this could be a riser in the system right here. Yeah. And he's, he's dealing with some cold weather up there in the Northeast and in, in Hartford, you know, he, they opened the year in Richmond. So, all right, that's the South. That's a little bit, warmer and you know proceeded to go five for 14 with eight rbi two home runs looked good and since then again playing all around in the the northeast even going up to portland um that that can be rough and and sometimes there's an element of that uh if, if some of your games get washed away um or if you're just playing in the cold weather like that's that's a huge element of these early season games so definitely showed showed some decent pop so far he's only 22 years old you know you forget that um, that, you know, he was a prospect. He said, Oh, that was like two, three years ago. Yeah. He was a 19 year old, um, winning the Midwest league MVP doing things that 19 year olds simply just shouldn't be doing. Yeah. Um, and, and then had a wrist injury. So he's, he's pretty much bounced back from that. Um, and, and, and is at full strength as far as we know. And so we'll see what he does in that lineup, you know, doesn't have a lot of protection around him. Hartford is uh, a little bit on the on the lighter side, at least as far as power hitters go. They yeah. do have a lot of good contributors in that club. So, uh, again, hard to know if, if guys getting pitched around or not, but that'll be part of his adjustment. That'll be part of that adjustment period of saying, hey, if, if, am I the only guy that teams are afraid of don't let Ella Huris, uh beat beat us? Then maybe, but he's he'll have to figure that part out. And his coaches will let him know, like, hey, yeah, expand the zone a little bit. Put a little bat on the ball. See sure. see what you would do. Whereas in the majors, you probably wouldn't necessarily tell a guy to do that. Right. Like, get on base. That's fine. Yeah. Just get yeah. on base. But he's working on his skills. He's developing those things. He's a big beefy boy. And, uh, and, and I hope he just can stay healthy enough this year so we can see 
what he's capable of because he's a he's a part of that third base first base mix um for the rockies going forward yeah you reminded me of uh what a pitcher's league that is so i went and checked his wrc yes. plus on fan graphs as well 123 so i like that uh, you know solid 23 percent above league average uh, for this guy his first year in the Rockies system and as you mentioned still pretty dang young for the level uh, at 22 years old so uh the last little group of them i just wanted to see you know uh aaron shunk brenton doyle kind of represent uh, I, I feel like there's one more guy that's kind of in that category of uh guys i think are, are pretty solid guys i don't see them as being future stars what are your your takes on these players who you know i think are really good system guys could end up being future role players but am i selling them short brenton doyle's somebody i've seen a few people say i don't know he could be a he could be a thing doyle is the one doyle okay. is going to be the sweetheart of the system um, once okay. more people get, you know, get to, to watch him play and kind of pay attention because he came out of relative obscurity, yeah. um, Shepherds university, I think, uh, in, in West Virginia. Up. So division two school. So, Damn. you know, he raked there, but you go, well, what kind of competition is that? Like that's uh, okay, cool. Yeah. A lot, a lot of guys do that. Um, cause they're not playing against anybody good. And yet he goes to grand junction hits incredibly well there uh, on, a, on a very talented Grand Junction Rockies team. And he's doing it now in, in high A Spokane. And so people are going to take notice. Three homers, 10 RBI, batting 284, uh, 842 OPS, fourth highest in the system. Um, the only guys that are above him, they're all Albuquerque. So, And they're all a lot older than him, like guys like yeah. Greg Bird. So yeah, right. you talk about being 23 years old, just a, a pure athlete, a guy who's – you know, has a body like a, a safety in the NFL. He's going to be very interesting to, to, to watch going forward because he has um, maybe not an abnormal pedigree, but but that of a, of a guy you don't typically see. Division two, he was the highest division two drafted uh, player in, in, in that year of, of, of 2019, taken in the third round. So that was uh, not necessarily a stretch because he's doing it right now. And and pro people that are the prospect hounds, like they're going to hear that story and go, oh, I love this guy. He is proving everybody wrong. Like when he was, came out of high school, he proved people wrong. And even right. as after a sophomore, no one, you know, offered him the ability to transfer somewhere. No, he just stayed where he was at. I, much better equipment. I've heard the workout room there at Shepherds University was pretty shoddy at best. Um, just really bad. And so now he's got the best of everything right there right. in front of him. And we're seeing how he's responding to that. So. Doyle is is definitely a guy that is, you know, in, incredibly intriguing. And he was just a little bit behind Shunk in our in our rankings. He was still seventh. Yeah. Um, and and Shunk is a guy who does have the pedigree, right? Coming out of the University of Georgia, yeah, uh, two way guy too, right? He was even the closer for Georgia, right? Um, who had his season cut short a little bit in in 2019, and uh, has missed a couple games recently. So we we hope he can get back out on the field. And, you know, Shunk is in a long line of those third base prospects um, that Dick Monfort likes to judge about. Like, hey, do we draft a third baseman, you know, this year? Ha, ha, ha. Well, you know what? They can play first base. They can also play second base. Look at Ryan McMahon. Apparently. I was going to say, so far, you know, if it's working, it's one of the few things they're doing that seems Kinda to is. be working. Yeah. Ryan Vallade is, was, you know, he was drafted as a shortstop. Right. But you go, hey, he's probably he was, better as a third baseman. Yeah. Now he's in the outfield. Yeah. All right. El here's Montero, third baseman. Uh, maybe he goes over the first base. Ryan McMahon, third baseman, even said, I actually feel more comfortable now at second base. You know, big right. guy in that DJ LeMahieu mold. And so, yeah. you know, Aaron Chunk has been playing a little bit more second base, and that could be where he's at. Um, maybe, maybe, you know, becomes what we think Brendan Rodgers is going to be without as much hype, right? Yeah. And there's an intriguing pop in the bat if he does end up at second base too. Where you go, yeah. okay, that that could be a lot of fun. As a third baseman, I've never been super excited about Shunk, but as a second baseman, yeah. I could get pretty excited in a hurry. Especially like as you said, if either Rogers, you know, can't get it done, or if Brendan Rogers is the shortstop of the future with whatever his name is, who's playing there now, maybe with somebody else. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Any other Sam Weatherly's had a nice start to the season. He's striking out a ton of dudes. I was very intrigued by him on draft night. Again, he's still not yet 22 years old, uh, striking people out. That's fun. 
Carl Kaufman, we talked a little bit about him with Goody, about how he had a nice little start, so they moved him up to double A. That was a little um, that was on the aggressive side, which you love. Uh, yeah. On the flip side, you know, the, the another move that was not a head scratcher because you don't scratch your head when you see Carl Kaufman dominating and in, in high A. You go, yeah, that's great. Go get after it, dude. Um, Grant Levine repeating Fresno, which you know takes on a different connotation because you go, yeah. well, that was that was low A two years ago. And now he's doing the same thing again. But, you know, sometimes guys, you know, need that where, you know what, let's, let's err on the side of caution and let's have this guy build some, mo build some momentum. And then we'll, we'll, we're rocking him forward. It's like with Ryan Rawlson, you go, wait a minute, this, this guy could be in your, could break camp um, with the Rockies on opening day, maybe as your fifth starter and you're starting him in double a gets his three starts under his belt. Cool. He's good to go. Albuquerque next stop and he's fine and so you hope that's nest that that's true for levine but you know togli has essentially you know jumped past him there in uh in the depth chart as far as first baseman go and then i just realized that ezekiel tovar and mateo gill have almost the exact same statistics <laughs> for fresno <laughs> right now interesting young uh infielders in the rocky system again gill came over in the arenado deal both hitting just over 300 both with six doubles both with a triple Tovar has a home run, Gill, or has two home runs, Gill, just the one. Uh, but yeah, so like you said, that Fresno team, a lot of fun to watch right now. If, if you got to go out and see one of these Rockies affiliates, that's probably the team to go see right now. For sure. And, you know, another guy that he only got an honorable mention it, that's been very good has been Brailing Eusebio, a guy that was, you know, a top 30 prospect for a couple yeah. of years had to get Tommy John. There was even some thought that last year someone would snag him up as a rule five pick because of the upside. And he's 24 years old right now. Uh, he's in low A in, in, in Fresno and in 25 innings pitched. Uh, he's fared, you know, in, in incredibly well with a two, four, nine ERA. And he's a guy you go, Hey, okay, maybe, maybe this is someone you can hope, hope on a little bit more. That's recovered from injury. Um, I, I did want to, you're talking about, uh, Fresno a little bit there. Uh, Mitchell Kilkenny has been another one who yeah. has rebounded from injury. Uh, Jack Etkin just recently wrote about him uh, for his piece in, in Baseball America. 16 innings pitched in, in uh, three outings, 1.13 ERA. Yeah. They had a lot of hopes for him uh, coming out of Texas A&M. So it's uh, – there, there are guys doing make right. you smile. Just, yeah. yeah, again, a guy that – uh, failed to live up to certain expectations uh, and you go, well, that's okay. Everybody has a different path just yeah. because they, they fall off a, a top 30 list. Uh, I'm not even sure that he necessarily made ours as a, uh, as an honorable mention. I don't, I don't think he did. A couple of years ago, he would have though. a couple of years ago. He definitely would have. List, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, Kilkenny didn't and you go, Oh, this is a, this yeah. is a top round pick, but you go, what have you done for me lately? You seem to be struggling a little bit. Uh, but Montano, yeah, uh, playing really well. And again, guys are still really young. Um, maybe they don't become a superstar. Maybe they don't become a star. But maybe they can contribute. Maybe they can at least have that cup of coffee because no matter how much you can get in a signing bonus or how, or how high you're drafted, you are not guaranteed anything yeah. at all. Jake, this comment is great. Rocky's going to field a team of four third basemen, four center fielders, <laughs> and a pitcher. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, you could. Be, I mean, you get McMahon, Shunk, Valade, and Ayla oh, Harris Welker. Montero, Welker. <laughs> yeah, you could have third baseman out in the outfield too. You don't even need those center fielders. You can just put third baseman everywhere. Apparently, that's a new uh, kind of shift. I, I'm all for that. <laughs> I'm all for that. Uh, if uh, if the laundry it. department can figure out how to make that work, I am all for that. Yeah, right. See, see if we can make it happen. Hey, if you think you know. For sure, which one of these players are going to work out, which aren't? Well, you got premonitions about the future. That means you should be hopping on that DraftKings Sportsbook app. Make yourself a little money with that stuff that you know about the future. Or at the very least, you can make sports that much more fun. Get a little skin in the game. Betting a little Nuggets playoffs right now. They're looking good. Betting a little Avalanche playoffs right now. They've been sitting at home waiting for someone else to decide whether or not they want to play them as they just swept through that first round. You got to enjoy that. Or, of course, you can be betting daily on Colorado Rockies or really any baseball. It can make any baseball game that you're watching a lot of fun, taking the over-unders on 
run scored or strikeouts, who's going to win the baseball game. Sometimes betting at bat to at bat about what the outcome is going to be. A whole lot of fun. And we're always giving you tips and, and updates and uh, kind of our own suggestions for what we might be doing. I love betting on someone to hit a home run because you put down a very small dollar amount. And if it comes through, it pays out big. Right sure. now, though, your small dollar amount to pay out big has to deal with the NBA. You can use promo code DNBR when you sign up to turn $5 into $200 in free credits. All you have to do is pick a basketball team of your choice to win their next game. And if they do, you can claim $200 in free credits. It's promo code DNBR for a limited time only. A DraftKings Sportsbook must be 21 or older, Colorado only, new customers only. Wage paid out in site credits. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. And if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. You know, when we talk about not having anything guaranteed to you, you have to bring up Riley Pint. But guess what? There's good news because he's actually been I didn't doing even look. well. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, I, I didn't even remember is, is really what I think a lot of people are saying. I've read it. He's, he's had a shaky couple of uh, outings, um, but his first five outings, scoreless, um, which was really good. No, so uh, and just under five innings pitched, um, you know, no, no earned runs. Did have a, a weird one on, on May 9th where he was a little wild, walked three guys, hit a batter. Um, but again, a guy, a guy that's, you know, as, as tall as he is, as fine. big as he is, Right, yeah. six foot five, two twenty five. You never know what could happen. I mean, yeah. he's primarily a reliever now, but um, you know, we we wish him nothing but the best. And and again, guy still has a lot of potential, and and maybe he can figure it out. And that becomes a success story in and of itself, right? We we love those kind of stories. Totally. We we love it when they just go, oh, you were as fantastic, if not better, than we had imagined. But we know that that's not always possible in baseball more than any other sport. Right, and so he's having his redemption right now, and 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 you hope he he gets it, and, I, and you hope he doesn't become on that list of guys that were oh first round picks that never made it to the majors or top five picks, whatever it is. He's still going, he's still fighting, and and we wish nothing but the best for Riley Pine. Yeah, the guy's like ninety percent elbows and knees, and so we're gonna see where he where he ends up coming from. <laughs> I'm I'm totally with you. It's like how often do we see? You know, the story of, well, the guy was the number one overall pick in the draft, and then he was rated number one overall throughout his entire career, and then he made his debut, and he was awesome, and he was a Hall of Famer, and that was it. It's like, that's that maybe has happened a few times, and we know those people's names. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just, it, who were, was like, I was trying to remember. Was it like Willie Mays or one of those guys was like a number one pick and was a number one prospect and then was the number one like just forever? And you're like, okay, fine. It happened for you, right? But even guys like Bryce Harper being the number one overall draft pick, then being the number one overall prospect for his very short time in the minors, then coming up and being pretty good right away and being a star player, but then – you talk, you, you ask the average baseball fan today, what do they think of Bryce Harper? No, Mike Trout, tell you that much. You know, it's like, damn, this is a tough business, man. <laughs> it's brutal it's, out there. It is, yeah, because, you know, you, you got those haters out there. You know, you, you, you got those people out saying, like, oh, everything's been gifted to you. And, you know, that's the crazy thing you think about. And, and this is, this is uh, you know, uh, the dark side, I think, of amateur sports is – these high school players, even, even kids that are 12 years old, they become like almost professional ball players. Or they, they, they treat baseball like it's this career and they just continue to just focus on nothing but that and put all their eggs in one basket. It is one of the reasons why a lot of doctors think that's why we see an increase of, of, of elbow injuries and um, mm. because players aren't athletes. You know, I, we were talking, I was talking with Matt in our, in our discord the other day. And it's like, it used to be, you were an athlete who played baseball. Right. You got good and you did a little bit of everything. And now you're a baseball player. Right. And that's it. And that and that's fine. But you have those overuse injuries and all of those things. And it, it doesn't make you a better all around ball player. But, um, you know, for, for some of these guys, they get that they get that, you know, star tag put on them so quickly, not as a star athlete, but just as a star baseball player. And that can be really damning and that can be hard. And um, and again, kudos to these guys who, who go out and do it. And they say, I'm 14, 15 years old and I'm going to focus on their, their diet. Like they eat way, I eat well, but these guys, kids even <laughs> eat way better than right. me. Right. You know, like it's impressive the dedication that they have. And as you said, it's not given, 
you're not guaranteed anything in this game. Yeah. Will, I think you're right. I think A-Rod was a 1-1. I think Steven Strasburg is actually one of the guys that I'm I'm most impressed by. But you even look at it and you say, would you say Steven Strasburg was the best pitcher of this generation? Like, probably not, right? But a very good right. one. And, and, and a guy who's, who's been great. Hardly a disappointment. But being 1-1 and then being a superstar Hall of Famer, it's just like, no, nah, man, it's, it's tougher. There might be as many guys who've come from – after the tenth round, who've ended up in the Hall of Fame as guys who were one one. Now I'm I'm stacking the deck a little bit there, but still, right? Like we know the, those guys' names too, the Mike Piazzas and the. Well, that was the name that I was going to go with, and that yeah. that was what was so amazing about um, his induction in the Hall of Fame when he went in in 2013 was that it was him and Ken Griffey Jr. So you had a guy that went one one overall Good. in Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, a guy who. Who was a kid? Well, he's the kid. He's the he kid. Was the kid, yeah. Yeah, uh, but you know, grew up in 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 Yankee Stadium in Riverfront Stadium uh, in in Cincinnati with his father, King Griffey Senior, of course. And then you have uh, a guy like Mike Piazza, who was. Do you do you know what round he was selected in? You know it was uh, late, right? You know no, it, was it was late. late. It like fifty two. Okay, now most people are going. Well, that's a little crazy because there's only 40 rounds. Well, there was 40 now with there being less minor leagues. Now there's really only going to be 20 going forward. But you go, there's 40. But before that, there were even more I rounds. I was going to say, there, yeah. There and used so to be. you had the right idea. You were, you were closer you were closer to the answer than, than the number 40 there. 62nd round. 62nd round. Think of all of those guys that you and I could have gotten a phone call. Just to be like, <laughs> hey, he could be a good point. clubhouse guy. I think he plays. You know, maybe one of my highlights from one of the Sabre softball games, you know, we I yeah. played in, started circulating. Everyone got drafted back then. There's really no excuse why you and I didn't. Yeah. Um, but and that was that was only Just done as fine. a favor. Um right. you know, to his godfather time in the sorta. So uh it's it's crazy how many different paths guys can take. And right. you know, for for better or worse, you 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 look at the minor leagues. Uh, if we want to tie it back into the game today and you say, ah, oh, man, it's a, it's a shame that Colorado Springs, man, that used to be the, the final stepping stone for guys before they went to Colorado or for a time Cleveland in the early days of the Sky Sox. Um, and Grand Junction was, was the first rung on the ladder. And now yeah. they're not a part of MILB, but yet they're still bringing, they still have professional baseball and they still have guys that haven't given up on the dream. And there's still that chance for some of those guys, you know, I recently wrote an article about the Pioneer League, and one thing I didn't include in there was the fact that the vibes recently came together. Thanks, Jacob. I uh, <laughs> appreciate that, that you would have drafted me. Um, Not me. <laughs> he was like, yeah, a little lanky. I know he's eating too much Wagyu beef. He <laughs> drinks a lot of Breck Brew and Strava coffee. If you, throw, if you throw us a compliment, it doesn't even need to be a super chat. Uh, <laughs> but if it's a super chat, we'll talk about it for a whole segment. Um but no, you, you uh, the one thing that the Vibes did was they actually partnered with a, a Mexican league team. And so there are basically uh, kids from around 17 to 20 years old. So they've got amateur ball players that could be signed, you know, this summer at the next signing period uh, that could be future major leaguers. So it's almost like before they're minor leaguers. It's like a summer collegiate league in yeah. a sense. So they're they're trying to keep it alive down there, those these these young guys and these organizations. Um, so if you're out in Grand Junction, don't give up on the the GJ Rockies. And if you're down in the Springs, you know, don't give up on the Rocky Mountain vibes. And if you're in the northern part of Colorado, hey, the NoCo Owls are coming next year as part of the Pioneer League because the one beautiful thing about baseball is yeah. you just never know. You never know. Like an army of steamrollers. <laughs> <laughs> Baseball rolls on, baby. So, yeah, love it. We're we're gonna keep getting. I gotta watch a little more. I gotta tune in, honestly, to let y'all know. Um, obviously, you know, with that not being a full season last year, uh, as bad as the Rockies are, we've kind of just been drinking up having baseball every single day. Uh, and so, <laughs> but it'll be nice to flip on a little uh, MILB, check out a few more of these games, watch these guys. Because Patrick's right; like the future is really what we're looking at right now. The, our you know, any productive conversation about the Rockies is going to be about how do they look in a couple of years? And that's going to include a lot of the guys that we talked about today. So now's the time to get to know about them, those range of possibilities. Hopefully they're adding to this group 
uh, in the near term. Oh, Jacob, you did come in. <laughs> uh, the best flow draft Patrick is going first overall. Drew drafted you as well, just in the second round. Okay, I'll take it. Well, not for the flow draft. I don't think I made it on the flow draft. You got the height of Bryce Harper, and I got the hair of Bryce Harper. Okay. So that works. Right? Between the two of us, could we get the contract of Bryce Harper? I don't know. <laughs> Never. We we everyone everyone watching this now. All of the, the nearly thousands of people watching this or listening to this podcast, if you added up all of our all of know, our contracts. Certainly all of our yearly earnings, it's not gonna reach Bryce Harper. But what about our lifetime earnings? Maybe it equals maybe, it? Maybe. It's a That's, 13 year deal he got or whatever. That can be depressing to think about. I don't think it's yeah. depressing. It's just <laughs> I, you just can't wrap your mind around, right? Because oh. look, we, we all have worth, we all have value, and we all have jobs and things that we're good at. And then you get paid for an honest day's worth, honest day's work. But what Bryce Harper and these major leaguers and these superstars get paid, we'll, we'll never be able to even understand. Right. What. Imagine making a million dollars a year for just like five years. Right. Just like what? Then what? You really want to blow? If I may quote one of my favorite mo movies of all time from The Matrix, what's really going to bake your noodle later on is the people signing the checks. <laughs> it's one thing to receive a check for a million dollars a year. Imagine writing multiple checks for that amount and just having it be a part of your. Now those people, there. Uh, it was all. I think it was Jalen Rose who always talked about. You know, there's a difference between being rich. And being wealthy, yeah. The players, players are rich, and we we have a hard time imagining what it's like to be that rich. But the owners, the owners are wealthy. Yeah, the the That's, if you are if you are rich, you're you're looking at Bitcoin and you're you're saying, yeah, oh man, I'm gonna make some profit here on this, and I bought a lot of of Bitcoin uh, stock. But if you are wealthy, uh, you invented it. <laughs> or you right. you your co-owner right. of Tesla. That's, that's right that's right like yeah. yeah that's right oh man well hey i just got this text from my mom so everyone knows this is totally real family we've got some family in town my aunt and uncle pat and dave they're fantastic and awesome they're having hassle cow steaks and breck brews for dinner and you should be as well that looks delicious. I'm going to have some of that. So Yeah, if, if you eat Hassle Cattle Company, you are definitely rich in life. Rich in life, that's, that's right. Rich in flavor, rich in taste. Right. Uh, and we do live the dream, talking baseball every day, even though sometimes it gets a little weird, and talking it with, with all of you fine folks. That's really what makes this the dream job in the world. So we appreciate each and every single one of you for hanging out with us. Make sure you are a full member of the family. Subscribe to the DNVR.com today. You get so many fantastic things for doing that. We talked about it before with the written content, all kinds of discounts on stuff, access to the Discord channel. Come hang out with us. 24 7 we really do appreciate each and every one of you hit us up on the discord or on social media at drew creaseman at patrick d lions at dnvr underscore rockies and of course you know you got to follow at michaela e perkins for all the baseball takes and to find out which pop culture icons she's never heard of so thank you all for being absolutely awesome we'll uh watch the double header then of course have the Sunday series wrap for you all. We appreciate each and every one of you out there. We promise you we'll keep being Patrick Lyons and Drew Creaseman in here. And until next time, we will see you at the ballpark.